But how does that work with you? Do you like, do you like date? Uh, yeah, I date. Generally, you know, with people who have similar lifestyles to me, people who travel a lot. It's hard to keep those things alive. I'm, I mean, who wants to follow me around the world and hope I have five minutes to be affectionate? Yeah. And honestly, guys don't really want to date women who are more powerful than them. You gonna ask why I'm still single? No, I get it. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, it adds up. And that's a clip from Long Shot, and it stars Seth Rogen. Hello, Seth. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. And the last time Charlize was on the program, which was in 2012 for Snow White, you said Charlie's Thron. And ever since then, I've been saying Thron. And I was yeah. told yesterday I got it wrong. No. No, no, no. You did a great job. That was it. You but just they said, work. no, it's rhymes with Heron. And I'm thinking, well, yeah. last time I spoke yeah. to you, which you won't remember, but I remember very well you said Thron. Listen. So I, rhymes you, with prawn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you did great. I'm very Thank happy you. with yeah. that. Yes. Okay. So Seth is Fred Flasky and Charlie's is uh, the Secretary of State, Charlotte. So can you ex introduce us to uh, the world of Longshot? Yeah, like I play a journalist who finds himself unemployed uh, after his paper is swallowed up by like a big conglomerate. Um, Murdoch style. Come yes, on. Uh, very much so. Um, and meanwhile, he was babysat as a child by Charlize's character, who has gone on to become the Secretary of State. And she's running for president and is hiring a slew of speechwriters. And I get hired to kind of help punch up her speeches. And then romance ensues. Charlize, do you want to chip in with that? Or is that pretty much oh, the no, whole... He, he covers that so well. Yeah, we've honed it's this. Impressive. We've been doing this a little while now. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> so impressive. <laughs> so tell us about your Secretary of State, because she is very powerful and she's very ambitious and she's going for the top spot. You see her compromising. You see her playing the game. You see her being a politician. And you realize when she meets Florsky and their history is revealed that she might have lost herself a little bit in this process of wanting to make change happen, be a politician that could actually be an action of change. And he really reminds her of who she used to be. And I think there's something very realistic in that. Yes. I, I feel like politics is a place that can suck your soul a little bit. But I think she's a good person who's just trying her best in a world that I think is filled with a lot of scrutiny for women. Uh, and she's just trying to keep her head above water and remain a little bit true to who she is. Can you just explain a bit about how the film came about in the first place? And had you guys worked together before? No, it was a, a script that my production company had and we very quickly were like, oh, I think we should try to get Charlize Theron in this, Theron in this movie. Yeah, and I'm Sorry, just not going to say it. You. you ruined this for me. <laughs> um, and uh, and she had a production company, and, and they came on, and, and together over the course of many years, uh, we worked on developing the script into something that we would be really psyched to go make, and, and we did. When it played at South by Southwest, and it went down fantastically well, you, you said then that you were a little bit nervous about how it was going to be received. Do, could you explain a bit why? I think it was a combination of the last time I was at that film festival was with Atomic Blonde, and it was one of the most incredible experiences that I've ever had screening a movie for an audience that just felt like the audience for that movie. They tend to be very animated watching movies there. It's a great experience. You're experiencing real film people, people who love film, watching movies. Watch one of your movies, and... You know, it was such a great experience that I felt like it would, this will probably not be that great because <laughs> why would one person be that lucky? Um, and also, it was the first time we showed the movie. We did test screenings and, you know, as producers, we would go and kind of like get feedback while we were cutting the film. But this was the first time that the movie was done that we really showed it to an audience. And so that is always a little nerve wracking. Yeah. Always. Very nerve wracking. And for you too. Oh, yeah. I get nervous every time. Like... Yeah, I mean, we really... You hide uh, it so well. But you I get, am not, but you if you ask well. me how I'm feeling, I'm like, I'm nervous. Like, I get, I'm nervous about it, you know? Um, I want I, the people to like our movies, and I really, 
am happy when people do, and I'm un much less happy at least when people don't. And so, and you never really know for sure. Like I've been blindsided uh, in in the past, and so you know you kind of carry that with you, and and you just it makes you nervous. You were both producers on the on the film, as you've already mentioned. Does that give you a greater sense of confidence? The fact you've been involved in this process, you haven't just been brought in at the last minute. No, I mean, I feel like it's a dangerous thing to have any kind of overly confident attitude towards yeah. anything that you just you just don't have a guarantee about. I mean, I think that's why a lot of actors and producers always talk about making films that they just innately have an attraction to. Was this something that I would want to go and see in a theater? Because beyond that, you really don't know. No. You just don't know. And I've definitely done films that... You know, I really thought people would emotionally tap into, and they didn't. So there is just, there's no guarantee with this stuff. No. Yeah. And I think it's good to have a little bit of that nervousness because it keeps you on your toes. And yeah. It makes you... Self-doubt is helpful sometimes. Is. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any self-doubt about falling down the stairs? No, that I generally uh, am confident. Does it pretty <laughs> impress you? Just explain what, because I'm sure that's you doing that stunt thing. But it is. It's me doing part of it. It, it. Those stunts are actually a lot more complicated. In order to make those look real and clumsy, actually, like a lot of planning and sometimes stunt work and I mean and sometimes visual effects like a lot goes into making those look like goofy kind of sloppy falls but uh what we often do is we go on YouTube and we look <laughs> we look up actual people falling and then we try to we pick one and we replicate it and for the falling down the stairs we found this video of it was like closed circuit television of like a woman in like a subway station so or terrible. something it's and horrible. she like started to fall down the stairs and then to try to get her legs back under her oh. she really ran faster and just ended up like propelling herself directly into the ground and sliding a pretty good distance. And so we found that and just showed it to the stunt people and we're like, I want to do that. We want this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I have a musical disagreement with you? Of course. Rock set. You don't like rock set? Uh, no, I absolutely detest rock set. <gasps> This More of an Ace of Base man. No, no. I don't. You just don't this like interview pop. just took a turn. Yeah, dark well, turn. I That's just, okay. I, you inter know? I interviewed them once. They and came. were they mean to you? They, they. Well, they're Swedish. You know, they're Swedish, so they're aloof. They just, <laughs> that's, that's just being a Swede. That's Swedish aloof. aloofness. <laughs> really? Anyway, ever since then, as soon as their stuff comes, I'm thinking, oh, no, you, because in the movie, it's a very important track It is. Track yeah. It for bummed you, you out. Yeah, and I was thinking, really, of all the songs that you did? <laughs> oh, what did Roxette so do to you? Oh, my gosh. Were they really that? They were that bad. Mm-hmm. Wow. Really? Just, just <gasps> anyway. You were wounded by Roxette. Yeah. So, well, they brought a lot of people together. So I enjoyed, well. I enjoyed the movie. <laughs> apart from, can I, Shalise, you were talking about the tone of the film. And one of the six, obviously, the gags are fantastic, and which is why it'll be such a hit movie. I think it seems to have a contemporary feel. It feels like it's a movie for 2019. I mean, the environment, we've got the protests going on in London at the moment. It also has a feminist feel to it. I don't know. That must make you feel very happy that it it's managed to succeed, not just being a comedy, but to feel very relevant. Yeah, no, for sure. And thank you for saying that, because that was definitely something that we talked about a lot and really paid a lot of attention to and worked really hard to achieve. And there's a lot of moments like that in the film that feels like, you know, oh, we we must have just taken a lucky guess. Yes. But <laughs> it was all very specifically thought out and planned. I feel like when Seth and I got together to talk about this, one of the first things that we talked about was that we both wanted to make a movie that had a throwback feel to the romantic comedies that we both loved, but also felt like something that could be timeless, not as only of this time, but can feel like was something that you watch in 10 years and there's something about it that still feels relevant. And yeah. I think we try to cover issues, they're just fact. Like, yeah. no, it doesn't matter how you feel about it or where, you're, where you stand with a lot of this stuff that we cover in the politics or in feminism. Or, they're just factual. Like, these yeah. are things that are happening today. And if you watch this movie, you will feel like we're all living in the same world. Like, yeah. we're not trying to tell you or have any commentary about it one way or the other. We're basically just acknowledging that this is the world right now. And so it's hard to play a female character and not have it feel like it is a woman living in this time mm -hmm. where if you were in politics, the scrutiny would be way worse than your male counterparts. 
yeah. and rock said should be in it. Yeah, <laughs> and that rock said is a good band. These objective <laughs> truths that you, we just, just all fact. deal with. Yeah. It is a fact. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to. We'll park that just yeah, uh, yeah. Ju- just for the moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn you. Yeah, I, exactly. Now, yeah. now I have what, a mission. What are you going to turn me with? <laughs> what, what, they, they've going, made all their music. I'm gonna say yeah, they, they it's all have, out there already. We're going to have them apologize to you. Joy, <laughs> Joyride was a terrible song. Oh, I, man. I so disagree with Fading you. Like the flowers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I feel like they might have just had a bad day. Do you? Okay. Okay. That, 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 Every that sweet may, has a bad. That day. may well be true. <laughs> just one more, one more thing on the contemporary side. Just because I still think part of this movie is a time you know is is a movie that could have been done twenty thirty years ago. But also it, at its heart, it also feels like you're attempting to get it, to plug into the kind of relationships that American society is prepared to find acceptable which maybe you wouldn't have been able to do 10, 15 years ago. One of the main draws to making this movie, like creatively for me, as we talked about it, was like it became very quickly like a great format to really include modern culture. And not a lot of movies, it seems like, even recently have been attempting to comment on culture or society or not even comment on it, but like acknowledge it. And I think that was like a very ripe opportunity for us comedically especially was like oh no one else is even acknowledging reality as it exists today in film we can just start acknowledging this stuff gender dynamics power dynamics not even like the political side of politics but the cultural side of politics uh, all that stuff just no one really at least in movies is talking about it and again for these types of relationships like the idea one of the things i loved was this idea of a guy abandoning his uh, his career ambition to pursue a personal ambition and that he finds himself getting like all the gratification that he thought he would get out of his job just out of supporting someone else basically and I thought that was not a story I had seen yeah. told a lot that I really thought was interesting you know? I just want to mention in this interview that Andy Circus puts in another extraordinary turn he really does <laughs> in, a, in a way in fact it was a couple of scenes in before I realized that it was Andy Circus. a lot of people I think have no idea he's in the movie Okay. I know. He's... Including him, perhaps. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's Tully was one of my favorite films of last year. Oh, I, abs- I absolutely blew me away. And are you working with Diablo Cody again? Oh, I would love to. She's working on Jagged Little Pill. Uh, Alanis, stage, like yeah, an Alanis yeah. Morissette film? Yeah, no, no, it's Now, stage. that would be it's fine. A, it's it's a play York. based on yeah. Alanis Morissette? Yeah, yeah it's amazing. What? I know, isn't that incredible? As a Canadian, I'm appalled I wasn't told of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I adore her. I adore the combination of her and Jason. I feel like the two of them have helped me be able to, you know, achieve the storytelling that I wasn't necessarily given the opportunity to. And I'm super grateful to them and they feel like it's a little bit like that reality show sister wives you know <laughs> like we are both his wives his and, sister wives uh, and yeah. his sisters and sisters best yes, of both we worlds are. yes exactly <laughs> and he is the husband Seth, do we see you in Lion King next? Is that uh... yeah that's the you don't technically see me but you will hear me in Lion King and see not live action uh, it is. I. It, I. I mean, I'm a warthog in the movie, so I don't. But I, I, it this is, is Pumba. Yeah, exactly. I did. I did not go through an Andy Circus esque <laughs> transformation to, to, to achieve that. Um, it was done by uh, yeah people in another place. Why did, why did you not? Yeah. Okay. But you will hear me in The Lion King. <laughs> Charlie's and Seth, thank you very much. And is, if there's one rock set track I need to take away to 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 reconsider, what what would it? I mean, it must have been love. Just no, keep losing to song. it. Then, 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 then there's no saving you. Some people, you know what? Some people can't be saved. You, like, if, if you don't want help, then there's no then there's no helping someone. <laughs> Shelley's Tron and Seth Rogen. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> that is a real bummer to hear. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>